Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Well, today I'm going to take the EXO drones, Cinemaster 2, out for its test flight. And it's very windy today. You can probably see those trees in the background. Probably 20 to 30 mile per hour wind, so maybe not the most ideal conditions. But other than that, it's a pretty pleasant day aside from the wind. But this is such a big, powerful, brushless drone that it should be able to handle that wind. It's just going to make it a little bit you know, harder for it to be able to hold position. You know, it's going to get blown around a bit. I did take this out uh, two days ago and, and did a test flight. and It flew pretty good. That's why I'm pretty confident that it can handle this wind today. Now, when I did that test flight, I noticed that the gimbal works pretty good on this drone. It has a three-axis brushless gimbal there. And, it, you know, there are a little bit of micro uh, shakes that EIS can't quite... You know stabilize but aside from that it worked pretty good unless you aim straight down while you're landing oddly enough you get a lot of shakes that way but that's not a way most of us are going to film so I, i'm not going to really worry about that too much whenever you're doing that but yeah it was pretty decent when i flew it the other day just i wouldn't expect this thing to have really great range being that it's just 5g uh, wi-fi based on this guy but otherwise it worked pretty darn good the return to home seemed pretty good on it and uh, yeah I was overall thought it was pretty darn uh, decent and at 4k at 30 frames per second 4k footage looked really good as well so let's go ahead and enough jibber jabbering let's go ahead and fire it up and get it connected and do the compass calibration and get it up in the air so I'm gonna go ahead and set it down here I got these rocks on my helipad because of that wind it's gonna blow it away and I forgot to bring my stakes out with me so go ahead and set it down here and hold the power button and there's the ESC's uh, the motor's actually making that sound. Go ahead and turn it on, and we are bound to the uh, to the craft. Now, once it gets you know going here, it's going to come up and make us do that compass calibration. I think it was both sticks down to the right if you want to manually start it. I think both sticks down to the left would also do your gyro calibration um, to level. So let's go ahead and what I'm going to do is, and there's a beeping, that means it wants us to do that compass calibration. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, start doing a screen recording here and then we'll get into the app and get all that going. Let me go ahead and, and just pause the video so I can get my phone mounted in here and we'll get a screen recording going and then we'll uh, go ahead and do that compass calibration and stuff. So it'll be right back guys. All right, guys, I have the screen recording going. As you can see in the app, it's saying we need the geomagnetic calibration, or what's otherwise known as the compass calibration. So we'll go ahead and do that. Then we'll get this guy up into the air. So to do the compass calibration, you're going to just pick the drone up and rotate it. And it doesn't really give you much notifications. You just do a three uh, level and then three uh, nose up. You can't also do it within the app. And I think within the app, it probably will show you a diagram. But they, like I said, they will tell you to do it here in the actual remote controller. So just do like three turns level. And I think that was three. Let's do one more. Then go nose up and spin. And once you get done, the icon on your controller will disappear. I'm pretty sure it will by now. Let's double check. And yes, it is gone. The little icon it was on the screen of the controller is gone. So the compass has been calibrated. Just recenter this on the helipad. It's a really small helipad. I think those props are above the the rocks. And I didn't mention yet, but I did do a table review on this a couple of days ago. So that should be the most recent video before this on my channel. So if you want to know everything that comes with this and just a closer look at the drone and a better setting than outdoors here, be sure to check back to that. If I remember, I'll put a card up here to link back to that video. So that's just quickly here. It looks like my sound on my button is getting squashed by the uh, um, the little mount there so hopefully that will go away now let's go ahead and look in the app if I can just show you guys a few of the features inside the app so we're screen recording you can see you got some brightness and saturation settings for the camera and some ISO so it's got some pretty good camera settings you click down here you can switch between 4k at 30 and 1080p at 60. So since I've mostly filmed 4K, I'm going to do 4K at 30. But I am filming at 4K at 60 with my head cam, so the whole footage will be 4K at 60. But the 4K at 30 footage will still look just the same. It'll just double the frame rate up whenever it's uh, in editing. And then you in here you have your gyroscope calibration and uh, for your gimbal. Your gimbal calibration, I should say, and a roll adjustment. Now, I wanted to mention that really quickly when I took it up and flew it. Um, 
it had a crooked horizon a little bit. So I took it inside and did a calibration of the gimbal inside on, on a level table in my basement and still had it. So I did the gimbal roll adjustment, which is really simple to do, and it looked like it was much better. So you may have to do that, but as long as that tilt is always the same way and you offset it in the app, then we should be good. So hopefully we have a pretty good steady horizon today. Um, like I said, the test flight did not. It had a bit of a tilt. It wasn't bad, but it was definitely noticeable. And you go to the gear icon, you can see you've got a beginner's mode, which we have turned off. You set the orbit diameter there, um, which is set the default of 16, uh, I think it's meters. Then your max distance I have all the way up, max height all the way up. And I turn home, I have set at 68, and it's, it's just in feet actually. So the uh, you can switch between metric and imperial, and of course I have it at 16 feet on the orbit. I'm going to go a little higher, like 40. Let's go to like... 32 feet and when you exit out of that it's going to ask you to determine or cancel determine sending that to the drone's flight controller and there we did it all right we should be good to go so let's go ahead and do a, a long press on the camera button should start us up with the uh, recording and now we are recording video and let's go ahead and press the unlock this in here it's going to really want to blow towards that farmhouse because it is very, very windy. Let's go ahead and do the auto takeoff. It is, it's fighting it. I'm going to give it a little throttle to ring it up. That's actually holding position pretty good considering how this wind is really... Um, I, there's very few drones that I review my channel that I would try flying in these conditions. I know the Femi X8, e, uh, X8 uh, SE 2020. Alto Evo. There's a few, but a lot of them are the little toy drones would just get blown away. But this one, as you can see, is handling it. It's a struggle, but it's doing it. All right, we can just let's flip it around, uh, rotate it around, I should say, and back it up, and then rotate that gimbal down. And there, you guys can see me. But yeah, this wind is right on the cusp, but really, I'm still a little bit uneasy. But again, we're not going to fly it too far away. And, it's, and it, we are in high rate, as you guys can see. There is, you hold down on that upper right bumper, you can go to, to lower rate. We don't want that. In today's with this wind, we got to be in the highest rate. So let's just uh, back it up a little bit here and kind of do a, uh, I'm going to drop it down, do like a uh, manual kind of droney there. So let's just get it up a little bit. We're going to give it some throttle and just take it back. There we go. I'm going to take it too far because of that wind. Let's just fly it forward here. And it's going to be able to handle it, as you guys can see. Now, if we get this drone flying with the wind at its back, the tailwind, it's going to really fly. You see it's kind of poking. Watch my turn this thing around. It is going to scoot. It is like it is trucking now. But again, this drone's got enough power. I'm going to try to correct it here. I'm looking at the Wi-Fi. We're over the house. And there is some lag. So that lag is making, you know, you get that lag in the Wi-Fi. So as I'm trying to steer it with the Wi-Fi FPV screen, you know, I'm over steering, I should say. I'm over yawing because of that lag. It's just going to be that way in all these Wi-Fi drones. That's what's nice about, like, the the DJI's um, OcuSync and the Lightbridge they had before. Uh, Altel system, even Femi's, is those have way less latency in those proprietary type uh, systems that they have set up based on their own, you know, it's not just a standard Wi-Fi based, it just has less latency than this. So we can see as the gim how the, how's the gimbal working here. Um, again, you're going to see some shakes. I'm going to aim the gimbal back up so we're not just looking at the ground. 
But overall, this drone's doing pretty good considering these conditions. These are really not ideal wind conditions for a drone. But again, this is a big boy. I've not weighed it. This is way over 250 grams. So if you're in most countries, including the United States, you are going to have to put your FAA number on here. Now, there's wind noise in the mic, guys. I'm sure it's going to be. I'm trying to get my back to the wind, but it's going to be, even with the uh, dead cat attachment on the mic, it's going to be tough here at times. The wind's going to really crack all and uh, break up the mic, so I apologize. So let's just fly it out here, get a little higher over the cemetery, see how that feed works. Again, we're not going to, you know, they rate this thing, I, I, I mentioned it in the unboxing, I don't remember exactly, but the transmission range is obviously going to be less. But we are out um, about 500 feet. And this is about what why I start breaking up a lot. I've still got a decent feed. This is not bad. All right, now I'm gonna stop it right about here. I'm out 800 feet. I'm gonna go ahead and just tell it to come back. Let's just see, especially in these windy conditions, how is this gonna do? But I'm pretty happy though. That actually was not bad. I, a lot of these drones, I get to the back side of the cemetery, you know, roughly in that uh, 100, 150 meters, which is, you know, 600 feet or something like that. They break up. This one, I was at 800 feet. Here we can see it coming. And it, it, it absolutely was still going good. Um, I could have gone farther, but again, in these conditions, I don't really want to um, push it too far in case we have to fight that wind coming back home. You know, you still worry a little about risking a, a blow away of the drone. But, and I don't really do range tests anymore because the rules are pretty strict now. You need to maintain a line of sight, and I can still see it there. If I'm able to go beyond the line of sight, then, you know, I'm breaking the rules, and I don't need the FAA coming after me on my YouTube channel because I'm flying my drones too far. Years ago, you could certainly get by with it, but it's not a good idea. Those rules are there for a reason. So let's see how far off we are going to be. We're going to be off about five feet or so which is about, about you know, pretty standard for a drone that's just using GPS. This is within the acceptable um, buffer uh, within accuracy of a GPS. You probably wonder, well, why did the DJIs and the Altels and even the Femi come down and land right on the helipad? Well, because they're down where camera's looking for it. They're looking at the ground and recognizing the pattern are in the Femi's case the circular helipad and that's why. Let's go ahead and unlock the props and we'll just do a manual takeoff this time. Just give it some throttle and get it up in the air. Let's see the gimbal, let's aim it up a little bit. And let's go ahead and test the smart features. We still have um, quite a bit of battery I'm sure. It's a little hard to see in the glare here. So I'm having a little bit of trouble seeing some of that, but it'll be very visible to you guys. Actually, it's on the actual, I was looking at the app, but on the screen I can see I got three out of four bars. They were still recording. Now the first time I flew this in the, uh, the test flight I did, which I obviously didn't film, um, I did lose connection with the app the very first time. And then I turned on airplane mode and after that I did. So I made sure I did that ahead of time. It's always probably a good idea to get your Bluetooth disabled, which is also 2.4 gigahertz, which is the same as your controller. But in this case, it's not the same as the Wi-Fi frequency. And just disable all those extra things, the cellular data on your phone, and just get connected with just the Wi-Fi between the drone and yourself, just in case that might cause a problem. It generally is not an issue, but still doesn't hurt to do it. So let's go ahead and aim the gimbal down a little bit. And let's go ahead and do those smart features over here. Now let's try that follow me. Follow me is going to just follow the GPS of my phone. So you just slide it to the right and then start walking. And I did test this and it worked quite well. It should yaw on its axis now as it's following me. You don't want to go too quick because obviously the drone, you might get out of its field of view. See, I'm on the very edge of it right now, but it is turning. And you can see it yawing there. And let's just see, I'm gonna keep my back to the wind some because of that 
how much noise is going to be in my mic but it is absolutely following me it's very slow but that's because i'm not moving very quick i'm gonna y'all um excuse me, i'm gonna put the gimbal up a little bit but i thought the following me worked pretty good let's go this way and just see if it stops itself and it starts yawing and it is and, and these conditions are not like i said are less than ideal and it's still able to do it relatively well considering this wind is really bad let's see is it kind of correcting itself now so it looks to me like now it did lose me let's let's see if i can go in here and bring the phone around if it finally corrects itself and finds me because right now as you guys can see it finally did lose me so let's go ahead and just cancel it and then let's bring it over here and see if let's just start it over again and walk back i know i don't have the biggest area here to do this and you also want to make sure you're not too close to the drone that could be also what happened if you're too close it gets confused it doesn't always want to back up yeah it's really fighting and it is you know it's doing okay but you know there it's turning boy it's struggling because it has to it has to back up y'all do all that stuff and then it's got to fight this darn wind but yeah it is working and on a nice calm day this is going to work so much better let's go ahead and stop that and let's check the orbit mode apologize too if the camera's doing a lot i'm constantly adjusting these the osmo action is a very heavy action cam on my head and it keeps drooping down on my forehead but the image stabilization which i use usually will smooth that out and it shouldn't be too noticeable in the video but if it is i apologize and let's go back into there and go to that uh, point of interest or circle me or whatever they yeah they all have different names and it's just going to circle around here and you'll see it go i think we said it what was it 32 feet the default was really small it was under what was it 13 or 16 or something like that and it's just going to circle around that spot so you want to sort of get around the object you're circling and then make it the center of that circle because it doesn't actually start the spot you started on is where it starts circling that's not the actual center of the circle some drones you will mark the center which is better fly back and then it's and then like mark the distance and then it'll go the femis do that and that will actually let you set that center around the object a little bit better but that that's a nice smooth circle it's not herky-jerky it's not constantly you know doing quick yaw movements or something that ends up making it you know look herky-jerky that's a nice smooth point of interest so we went back in there and just click it again to cancel it we still got over half a battery according to the controller so Overall, it's pretty darn good. Again, I can't comment on the footage you guys are seeing because um, I can't see that right now. I can only see the FPV screen, which is never a good estimate of, of that. But like I said, I did see it in my test footage of the day, which was windy, but not this windy. And there were the micro vibe, vibes or micro jello. Um, and there's a bit of fish eye. I'm gonna give it some throttle so it doesn't bang in the ground. That wind can wreak havoc with the barometer and keeping its altitude but i thought the you know there's a little fish eye as i said in the camera uh the gimbal does have some imperfections but i thought the camera quality was pretty darn good and the frame rate is totally fine for 30. and if you want quicker movements and you're not worried about 4k because let's be honest 4k and 1080p on a smaller screen is not going to be easy to tell you got to get over 32 inches really up to 50 inch tv or something before the 4k is really going to start to shine so keep that in mind if you don't want the shuttery effects of the lower frame rate and you want to double that to 60 go with 1080p at 60. that's what i would personally use because you're not going to notice much of any difference in the video quality uh, most for most people at most times but you're absolutely going to tell a difference with the uh you're absolutely going to tell the difference with the higher frame rate you're not going to get the shuttery effect i call it as you're moving especially when you're yawing all right let's go ahead 
excuse me, let's go ahead and cancel the video. Let's take a couple photos so you guys can see the photo quality before we end this uh, uh, review. So let's go ahead and long press on there and that should stop the video, but I'm not so certain that it did because it looked to me like the app froze up. <laughs> Well, that's the first time that the app's done that. So let's go ahead and see. That should have stopped the video. Let's go back and the whole app is frozen. Let's see if we can get back into it. And yes, we were able to reestablish it. That doesn't always work, but hopefully the video is saved on the SD too because I did use the controller to stop it and not the app. So as you saw, there was a small app problem and Marcus over at Idaho Quadcopter told me he thought he had, he, it's been a while since he reviewed the uh, MJX version of this, but he had some he, uh, um, app problems and he's on an iPhone. So it sounds like it wasn't just isolated to to uh, Android and B. And this isn't, this is the Cinemaster 2 app, but um, I'm pretty sure it's just the same MJX app skinned, uh, just relabeled for Exo drones. Now let's go ahead and just, let's go ahead and just take it up a little bit here and let's take that photo. Get it up here. All right. Let's just do a quick press and see if we get a photo. TF photo, it says. Let's just walk over here a little bit and, and we'll take another one. Just so we know it's a different photo in a different spot. All right. All right, guys. So hopefully the video footage is on there. For some reason, it didn't save all that video because of the app freezing. Then obviously I will have the screen recording footage, which is going to be only 1080p, but otherwise it'll look pretty similar. It's just that whenever you're recording a Wi-Fi feed, you can get breakups or freezes, and you generally a lower frame rate. So hopefully we did not lose that SD card footage. If we did, there's nothing I can do about it because the app froze up. But the controller should have, should have told the SD, the drone to stop recording to the SD card. Let's just move the drone over here and get it, I'm not gonna try to land it on the helipad because of those rocks now, but let's just go ahead and land it. We'll just throttle down and it'll sense the ground and it'll, it will fire down the motors. Let's go ahead and just stop our screen recording. I was getting a notice that my phone was getting warm. So that's also something to keep in mind. Maybe that caused the app some issues, but I don't think that's going to be the case. All right, guys. So overall, this thing flies pretty good considering the windy conditions. 3X gimbal works pretty solid. It's not perfect. Return to home was fine. Overall, this is not a bad drone. It's not the cheapest drone. It's going to run you up in the 350 to 400 range, depending on sales. I know uh, Exo Drones has it on sale on their website. I think it's 20 bucks cheaper than Amazon where they also sell it. So keep that in mind. Um, you know, there are alternatives out there like the Mavic uh, Mini SE, Mini 2, the Mini 3 coming out. It's going to be quite a bit more expensive, but there are alternatives out there, but this one's not bad. And one of the nice things as I mentioned is uh, Exo Drones is really top tier customer service. So if you have a problem, if you have a question, they're going to address it. They will replace it as, as with Amazon if you were to buy from Amazon. But overall, you're going to get good customer service. So if you're someone who doesn't want to mess with the hassle of ordering from China or from some seller that you're worried about, you have nothing to worry about with Exo Drones. But you know, the drone itself, just be realistic, it's not going to film at the level of thousand uh, dollar uh, Mavic from DJI or something but overall not bad all right guys if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing while you're at it click the bell that way you're notified every time I upload a new video and as always guys have a wonderful day the power of the dark side, 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 side.